Hansel and Gretel There once lived a poor woodcutter, his wife, and two children, Hansel and Gretel. The woodcutter and his wife could not take care of the children anymore. They decided to leave them in the middle of the forest. Hansel and Gretel heard this and were very scared. They came up with a plan of dropping pebbles along the way their father took them. All they had to do was follow the line of pebbles back home. Their parents were surprised to see them and decided to take them again. Hansel and Gretel decided to drop breadcrumbs this time as their pebbles were gone. But sadly for the children, the animals and birds ate up all the crumbs. They walked and walked but couldn't find their way back home. Suddenly, they saw a strange house made up of cookies, candies, and chocolates. Just as Hansel and Gretel were eating the yummy door, a witch pounced on them. She locked up Hansel in a cage and asked Gretel to help her heat the oven. She would cook them and eat them up. But just as the witch bent to check the oven's temperature, Gretel pushed her from behind and locked the oven door. Gretel rescued Hansel and they filled their pockets with the witch's jewels. Finally, they managed to find their way back home and gave the jewels to their parents. Thanks to the clever children, the family was never poor and hungry again. Pinocchio Long ago, an old carpenter named Capetto carved a puppet in the shape of a boy and named it Pinocchio. He wished for the boy to be a real one. A fairy heard his words and fulfilled his wish. She added life to the puppet. But she warned Pinocchio that if he wanted to be a real boy, he must always be a good boy. Geppetto loved him dearly, but Pinocchio was quite naughty and seldom spoke the truth. As soon as he lied, his wooden nose would grow long. He always promised to be a good boy from the next time, but he soon forgot his word and he left school with his friends to join the circus. But he began to miss Geppetto. One day, he heard that his father had been swallowed up by a huge whale. He immediately set off to find the whale. The whale swallowed him as well. Inside the whale's belly, Pinocchio and Geppetto were so happy to see each other. They made a plan to get out and began tickling the whale's stomach. As soon as the whale opened his mouth and sneezed, Pinocchio and Geppetto shot out. They reached home safely. The fairy was pleased with Pinocchio's bravery that she turned him into a real flesh and blood boy. From that day, he was a very good boy and never missed school. The father and son lived happily ever after. Akbar says no. Sultan Khan was a courtier in Emperor Akbar's court. He wanted to make his son the royal treasurer, but his cunning plans always failed and he blamed it on Birbal. He always looked for ways to get rid of him. One day, Akbar was quite angry as Birbal was late to court. Seeing this, Sultan Khan said that Birbal is taking his position in the court for granted. He suggested that Akbar should not agree to anything Birbal said that day. Akbar thought that this must be another plan to trap Birbal. However, he decided to wait and see what Birbal would do this time. So he agreed to Sultan Khan's plan, who was mighty pleased. When Birbal came to court, he apologized for being late. But according to the plan, Akbar said he wouldn't. Birbal requested Akbar to believe him, but Akbar refused again. He understood something was up. He saw Sultan Khan smiling to see Birbal in trouble. Then Birbal asked Akbar if he would make Sultan Khan's son the treasurer. Akbar was very pleased at this 
and said loudly that he would never make him the treasurer. Birbal smiled and went back to his seat. Sultan Khan was stunned and angry. Once more, Birbal had outwitted him and his son could never become the treasurer. Goldilocks and the Three Bears Long ago, there lived a little girl named Goldilocks. One day, as she walked through the forest, she came upon a small house. Seeing the door open, curious Goldilocks walked right in. As soon as she went in, she saw three bowls of porridge on the table. She first tasted from the biggest bowl, but it was hot. She then tasted the medium-sized one, but it was cold. She tasted the smallest bowl and found it perfect and gobbled it up. She then explored the little house. She saw three chairs and decided to sit down. She sat on the biggest and the medium chair, but did not like them. As soon as she sat on the smallest chair, it broke into pieces, but she did not care. She then went up to the bedroom and saw three beds. She found the third bed just right for her and wanted to take a quick nap, but she soon fell asleep. The house actually belonged to the three bears, Papa Bear, Mama Bear, and Baby Bear. When they returned home and saw the mess, they all were furious. They found Goldilocks sleeping in Baby Bear's bed. Just then, Goldilocks woke up. She saw the three bears staring at her angrily. She screamed and ran out of the room. The bears hoped that she learned her lesson and will never walk into other people's homes and spoil their things ever again. The Noble Elephant In a forest, there lived an elephant with a long trunk and beautiful tusks. He was very kind and helpful. All animals in the forest, including the king of the forest, the lion, respected him. One day, a group of merchants lost their way in the forest. Suddenly, one of them saw the elephant beckoning to them. They decided to follow him. They soon reached at the edge of the forest and were thrilled. The merchants went to the city and met the king. They narrated the incident, but the cruel king only heard about the elephant's beautiful tusks. He wanted to kill the elephant and adorn his palace walls with its tusks. The king sent out to hunt the elephant. When he found it, he took up his bow and shot an arrow. The arrow whizzed past the elephant. The elephant ran deep into the forest and found a place to hide. The king continued to look for him, and suddenly the king stepped into the marsh. He screamed for help, but his soldiers were too far away to hear him. The elephant rushed and caught the king with its trunk, and pulled him to safety. The noble elephant then placed the king on his back and took him back to the city. The king thanked him for saving his life and teaching him the true meaning of nobility. The elephant returned to the forest never to be troubled by hunters again. The Otters and the Wolf One day, a wolf saw two otters arguing over huge fish. The wolf offered to divide it equally for them. He cut off the head and the tail and gave the otters a piece each. The otters thought he was fair and waited to see how he would divide the body. The wolf told them, the body is his payment for helping them and ran home with the best portion. The poor otters realized this was their punishment for being greedy and not trusting each other. What moral is more appropriate? A. Trust your friends. Or B. Trust a stranger. Leave your comment below.
The Persian Minister's Test. Once a Persian minister came to India and reached Akbar's court. There he requested to test the Indian minister's intelligence. Akbar readily agreed. He questioned how many turns were there in the roads of Agra. They were to give the answer by the next morning. All the ministers were puzzled. Birbal had gone to the neighboring city on business and was to return only late in the evening. When he returned, Akbar immediately told him about their problem. Birbal listened carefully and was deep in thought. Finally, he smiled and said that he would have the answer. The next day, their guest returned and asked them the question again. Birbal stood up and replied, "Two, left turn and right turn." The whole court, including the Persian minister, burst out laughing. The Persian minister then agreed that Emperor Akbar's ministers, especially Birbal, are the wisest in the world. Pipe Piper of Hamelin. Long ago, the town of Hamelin had a big problem of too many rats. The people tried every way to get rid of them, but in vain. The chief of the town declared to give ten sacks of gold to anyone who saved them from the rats. One day, a stranger from a faraway land came and told the chief that he would get rid of the rats. The stranger took out his pipe and played an odd tune. All the rats in the town heard the music and began to follow him. The clever man took them all to the river, where all rats fell and drowned. Finally, Hamelin was free of rats. The pipe piper went to collect his reward, but now that the problem was solved, the greedy chief refused to pay him any money. He immediately played his pipe again. This time, every boy and girl of Hamelin began to follow the magical music. The pipe piper took them all to a cave and closed it with a huge rock. Two children who were left behind went to the chief and told him what happened. The chief was very scared and ashamed of breaking his promise. He went to the cave and begged for forgiveness. He even promised to give the Pied Piper twenty sacks of gold. Finally, the Pied Piper let the children go. The town of Hamelin had learned never to be ungrateful again. The price of sweet smell. In Emperor Akbar's kingdom, a man named Yanchen had a very famous sweet shop. One afternoon. A poor man, Gopu, sat outside the sweet shop. He was enjoying the wonderful smell of the sweets, but he had no money to buy them. So he opened his own lunchbox and began eating his simple food. But Gopu enjoyed the delicious smell of sweets so much that his dry lunch tasted much better. He began to have his lunch at the sweet shop every day. Dianchen soon noticed this and demanded payment from Gopu for enjoying the smell of his sweets. Upon disagreement, they both went to the emperor's court. In court, Akbar and Birbal listened to the two men as they argued. Birbal thoughtfully told Gopu that Dianchen should get his payment from you for enjoying the smell of his sweets. He gave Gopu a coin. And asked him to keep it under Dianchen's nose, and said that the smell of money is enough payment for the smell of sweets. Gopu was ashamed to have brought up such a silly matter to the court. He pleaded for forgiveness. As for Gopu, Birbal gave him the coin and asked him to buy sweets for himself. A very happy Gopu left the court. The problem of the mango tree. 
In Emperor Akbar's kingdom, there lived Charan and Mahesh, who were neighbors. One day, they began arguing about a mango tree that was between their houses. They finally took their trouble to the king's court. After listening to them, Birbal asked them time to think and to return the next day. Birbal then asked a servant to go to Charan and Mahesh and tell them that thieves were stealing mangoes from the tree. When the servant told this to Charan, he said he would deal with it later as he was busy. But when Mahesh heard the servant, he quickly grabbed a stick and ran to chase away the thieves. The servant returned to Birbal and reported exactly what had happened. The next day, when Charan and Mahesh returned to the court, Birbal said that the tree should be cut and the wood could be equally shared by the two. Charan looked pleased, thinking of the money he could earn from selling the wood, while Mahesh looked horrified and pleaded not to cut the tree. He said he did not want the tree and it could be given to Charan. Hearing that, Birbal said Mahesh was the real owner as he cared for the tree. He also explained to the court what happened the day before. Everybody in the court were impressed with the clever way in which Birbal had solved the problem. The Proud Crow Long ago, a proud crow saw a flock of geese fly to the bank. He laughed at them and told them they were not half as graceful as himself. He could teach them how to fly. The goose was very offended. The crow flapped his wings and flew, doing somersaults and gliding in the air. He then challenged the goose to a flying competition. The goose accepted. The goose then began flying, ignoring the nasty remarks that were continuously made by the crow. They flew so far over the river that they could not see even a speck of land below. The crow began to get tired and was losing his strength fast. He began flying lower and lower. He requested the goose to help him or else he would drown. The goose felt sorry for him and carried him on his back to the bank of the river. The grateful crow thanked the goose for saving his life and apologized for being rude. The goose told him that he would forgive him if he promised to be humble. The crow promised never to be overcome by pride and thanked him for making him realize that everyone has their own limitations. The goose forgave him and they became good friends. The Shoemaker and the Elves Long ago, there lived a shoemaker and his wife. Nobody bought his shoes anymore, and they had become poor. He had cloth left to make one last pair of shoes. His wife consoled him and asked him to stitch the shoe the next day. Four little elves heard them talking from outside their window. They felt sorry for the kind man and decided to help him. They began cutting, sewing, and decorating the cloth. Before morning, they made the most beautiful pair of shoes. In the morning, the shoemaker was amazed to see the pretty shoes on the table. Soon, a merchant saw the shoes in the shop and bought them. He gave the shoemaker enough money to buy cloth for two pairs of shoes. The elves returned that night and made two more beautiful pairs of shoes. This continued for a few more nights. The shoemaker and his wife were puzzled and wondered who their friends were. One night, they decided to stay awake and find out who made shoes for them. They saw elves flying in and stitching the shoes. The shoemaker and his wife were so touched, they decided to make something for them in return. They made the best of clothes and shoes for the elves. When the elves came, they were thrilled to see their new clothes. They flew out in happiness never to return again. The shoemaker continued to make the best shoes and never forgot the kind elves 
who helped them in their time of need. The Sparrows of Agra One day, Chand, the most learned man of Akbar's kingdom, went to the court and challenged Birbal's intelligence. He asked Birbal for the exact numbers of sparrows in Agra. Everybody in the court was puzzled. However, Birbal calmly asked for time till the next morning. The next day in court, Birbal smiled and said, There are exactly 19,537 sparrows. Chand demanded, There may be more or less. No, there are exactly 19,537 sparrows, said Birbal. He continued, If there are less, it means that sparrows from the city have left to visit other places. Akbar smiled. And what if there are more sparrows? he asked. Oh, those are the sparrows from different cities that have come to visit their relatives here, Birbal replied immediately. The whole court laughed at Birbal's clever answer. Chand had to accept defeat and agree that Birbal was indeed the wisest man in the kingdom. The Three Little Pigs Once upon a time, there lived three little pigs. The first two were very lazy, but their brother was a smart and hard-working pig. One day, they decided to build a house each. The first and second pigs didn't want to work hard, so they built a straw house and a stick house respectively. But the third pig wanted to make a strong brick house. So he worked hard, while the other two pigs spent their time playing. One evening, a hungry wolf saw the three little pigs. He went to the straw house and demanded the pig to open the door. The pig meekly refused, and the furious wolf blew the house down. The pig ran to the second pig's stick house. But the wolf came there too. He warned them that he would blow the house if they didn't let him in, but they did not open the door. The wolf huffed, and the house of sticks tumbled down. The two pigs escaped to the third little pig's house. The wolf got there as well. In spite of his warning, the three little pigs didn't let him in. So he huffed and he puffed with all his might, but the strong brick house didn't fall. He finally gave up and went away. The first and second pig thanked the third pig and also apologized for being so lazy. They too decided to work hard and build strong brick houses. So the next time you see three brick houses in a row, you know who you'll find inside. The Tiger and the Gold Bangle once upon a time, an old tiger found a gold bangle. He picked it up and thought to use it as bait to trap some humans. He was getting too old to hunt anyway. So the tiger went towards a path frequented by travelers. Soon he found a man walking up the path. He called out to him and asked him if he wanted the gold bangle. The hesitant man refused to take it, but the tiger enticed him, saying he could get a hefty price if he sold it as the bangle was quite thick and heavy. Greed got the better of the traveler, and he thought that the old tiger could do him no harm. If he wanted to eat him, he could have done it by now. So he told the tiger that he would take the bangle. The pleased tiger held out the bangle and asked the man to come and take it. In his greed, he didn't see where he was going and stepped into a swamp. The man couldn't move now. He saw the tiger moving menacingly towards him and regretted 
letting greed overcome him. The tiger pounced on him and made a hearty meal of the man. The Unlucky Face One day, Emperor Akbar bumped into Yusuf first thing in the morning. Yusuf was a good kind man, but everybody thought that seeing his face brought bad luck. Akbar hoped not to have a bad day. Unfortunately, five minutes later, the emperor slipped and fell. Soon, he got a message that his beloved grandson was ill. Through the day, the emperor received more bad news, one about a problem with his enemies. He got furious and blamed Yusuf for all the bad things happening to him. He ordered Yusuf to be sent to jail. On his way to jail, Yusuf met Birbal and asked him for help. Birbal took him to the emperor. There, he asked Yusuf whose face he saw first in the morning. Yusuf said he saw the emperor. Birbal explained to Akbar that his misfortunes are far less than Yusuf's. After seeing the emperor's face in the morning, Yusuf is being sent to jail. So whose face is unluckier? Akbar immediately realized that he was being foolish to believe in such superstition and wrongly accuse an innocent man. Yusuf was set free and was very grateful to Birbal for saving his life. The Water in the Well In Emperor Akbar's kingdom, there lived a poor farmer named Sukhdev. His neighbor, Balraj, was a rich man, but he was cunning and cheated many people. Sukhdev bought a well from Balraj and paid him all the money. Soon, Balraj was back asking for more money for the water in the well. They both argued until they finally decided to go to Birbal. When they met Birbal, Sukhdev narrated his side of the story. Balraj told Birbal that he had sold only the well. If Sukhdev wished to use the water, he should buy that too. Birbal listened to them carefully and saw that Sukhdev was poor but truthful. He understood that Balraj was trying to cheat this poor farmer. Birbal told Balraj that if he had sold only the well, he should have taken out all the water before selling it. He told that in fact now, Balraj should pay the farmer rent for using his well to keep his water. Balraj was speechless and terrified. He saw how Birbal had taught him a lesson for being greedy. He begged for forgiveness and promised never to cheat anyone again. The Wicked Raven Once, two friends, a pigeon and a raven, were in search of food. They followed a man who was carrying a pit full of fresh curd. After a while, the man put his pot down and laid down beside it to take some rest. The raven pursued the pigeon to use the chance and have some curd. The pigeon did not wish to steal and eat, but the raven thought otherwise and swooped down to the pot to enjoy the delicious curd. Soon, the man woke up and resumed his journey. The pigeon warned his friend from taking more curd and getting into trouble, but the raven paid no heed and continued to eat from the pot. Soon, the man reached the market. He kept the pot down and was shocked to find it half empty. He looked around and saw the raven with his beak white with curd. The furious man picked up a big stone and flung it at the raven. The raven dodged the stone, but the pigeon could not get away in time. He got hit and fell to the ground and was badly injured. The raven flew away without bothering to help his friend. The poor pigeon lay in pain and realized 
that having friends who are wicked is as harmful as being wicked oneself. The Wise Rabbit Long ago, a cruel lion ruled a forest. He killed many animals. So the animals decided to send him an animal each day for his meal. One day, it was a rabbit's turn. He met him and said, Your Majesty, I met a lion on my way. He wants to fight you and rule this kingdom. The angry lion asked the rabbit to take him there. The clever rabbit took him to a lake. The lion saw his own reflection, and thinking it to be the other lion, roared at it. When he saw his own reflection roar back, he was so furious that he jumped in and drowned. Were the other animals happy with the rabbit? Yes or no? Leave a comment. The Wise Rat In a deep forest, there lived three friends, the crow, the tortoise, and the rat. They lived by the lake. One day, they met a deer who seemed very frightened. When they asked the deer what the matter was, they got to know that the hunters were planning to camp near the lake. They all were going to be in danger. The terrified tortoise decided to leave the lake. His friends followed him and they saw a hunter caught it and put it into his bag. His upset friends decided to help their friend. The wise rat asked the deer to lie on the path and the crow would pretend to peck on a dead body. The hunter came that way and was thrilled to see a dead deer. He kept his bag down to go pick up the deer. The rat then began biting the bag and set the tortoise free. Just when the hunter reached the deer, the deer leapt up and ran away. The hunter was shocked, but he consoled himself, thinking that at least he had the tortoise. When he picked up his bag, he was astonished to find the tortoise missing. Dejected, he went away. The tortoise apologized to his friends for being foolish. He was forgiven, and they all lived happily together for the rest of their lives. Thumbelina There once lived a little girl who was the size of a thumb. Her name was Thumbelina. One night, as she was sleeping, a frog who wished to marry her carried her away to the pond and placed her on a lotus leaf. When she woke up, she saw herself alone in the middle of the pond and began to cry. A fish took pity on her and decided to save her from the frog. She pulled a leaf to the bank and left Thumbelina there. Then she met a butterfly who took her to a land full of beautiful flowers and birds. She made many friends there, but soon winter came and all the birds went away to warmer places. Thumbelina was alone, and she nearly froze to death. A kind field mouse saw her and took her home and looked after her. One day, the field mouse told Thumbelina to marry the neighbor Mr. Mole, but she did not want to and was unhappy. As Thumbelina sat worrying, she suddenly saw her old friend, the bluebird. He took her away from the field mouse and flew her to a kingdom of little people who were no bigger than a thumb. They warmly welcomed her to their land, and she lived there for many years. How happy she was to finally find a home with friendly people who were just like her.